Hey, what's up? It's Kit. Time for another video. We're testing out uh, another camera that I have, and this has been with me for a really long time. In fact, one of my first YouTube videos was filmed with this. It's just that I haven't really explored it that much, but there were some that were really, really nice, and then, I don't know, for some weird reason, I put it up. So, yeah, we're using it again because the zoom function of this is I think way better than the other one. I don't know about the sound though. Okay, I don't know about the sound, but if the sound comes out uh, tolerable, that's fine. If not, then we're gonna have to find a sound solution, but the picture of this is actually pretty good. And the yeah, the quality is actually really good. Now, the thing with this now is that I wanted to do something that is kind of different. Uh, uh, we'll talk about something on the smaller end, which is the uh, CB1 Quick. This jig is very deceptive because a lot of people think that it's a fast jig, but would in fact it is a slow jig. Now, if you look at the profile of this jig, you see that, hey, it is actually quite symmetrical. The looks can be very deceiving because when you look to the side here, you'll see that the top is actually uh, a bit flatter than it is on the bottom. And with that, it actually gives it a side, uh, side to side roll and it flutters, okay? So, it's a slow jig. And you know what? I verified this with CB1. And they said like, yeah, actually, yes, it is a slow jig, but a lot of people think that it's a fast jig, but it is a slow jig, okay? So, let's go ahead and rig this. And by the way, this is one of my favorite colors, okay? And if you're new to the channel, this channel talks about the hows and whys of fishing. We cover everything from big game, ultralight, everything in the middle, including fly fishing. And today, we are going to be rigging the Quick from CB1, a slow jig that looks deceptively like a fast jig. And this has been extensively tested here in the uh, Middle East with great results. It has not been popular, but those that use this, even the bigger version of this, could testify how good this thing is. Okay, so let's go ahead and choose a hook that we're going to use for this. We're going to size it up and then rig it. Now, the rigging for this also is that there's no back hook. And you're only going to be rigging the front hook and it works really really well okay now here's the thing too if you rig a back hook on this you could rig a treble hook and that's what I have been doing so and what we are going to do is we're going to be choosing these okay this is our choice right here this is the uh, JF42 and they are PTFE coated. Really, really good. For our line, I'll use this because this is pretty thin and it's it's perfect for that. So this is the suffix 131. This is 100 pounds. So we have a lot of power for the, from here. And we're going to use very thin tying cord and again the method we're going to use is quite simple okay we're, we're gonna take a, uh, a long piece here split rings all the drinks are there so I'm just gonna take that all right so let's bring you in closer so that you can see I'm, I'm wearing a light shirt today just so you guys are not gonna think that I only have three shirts I have to wear dark colored shirts so that you guys can see 
see the things better all right so so the very first thing we're going to do is tie overhand knot in our assist cord so those knots are important i have a waist shoot here that i could just use to okay so and then there's a small tag end okay we just bring that this is a size 12 and it is 20.2 pounds which is honestly way more than enough than what we need okay now I have to be very careful with these because I got hooked by these hooks the most I'm not I'm terrified with these hooks actually because they work so well and because they're PTFE coated what happens is that as soon as you as soon as this goes in like that you don't feel it it just goes in and it's super slick so you have to be also very very tight with your wraps here otherwise that will get you by the way new blades right here new blades i went to daiso yesterday and bought me some blades because it's high time that i change the blades okay so there we go again just the knot okay let's go closer so you could see we're not putting flash on this i know some people are asking are we gonna put flash is he gonna put flash the more it's not because i don't want to okay there's a before there was this huge drive for putting flash on and pretty much everything but the more i progress with this whole slow jigging and fast jigging thing the more i actually don't want to put stuff and you still you actually catch about the same you actually catch at the same rate and there are situations where I want to put flash, but majority of the time, I just don't want to do it. All right, now we have that. And then it has to be... So again, if you measure the hook, okay, and it'll fall about there. And you will see that from the middle, let's align it, okay, from the middle, it sticks out a bit and that's how you get the sizing now this is gonna be tricky because see that's this is basically where you want your solid ring to be and that's quite short but that's fine okay we have a method for that okay and then actually you know what we could probably put four hooks on this and it'll be let's for put four hooks okay so let's do this as the uh, back hook first and see so if it's that long okay and it should be there you see how i'm measuring it it should be there which means that we have to put our knot on this end right here and just to be sure what you need to do also is just be conservative and make that a bit shorter than what you really need that way just in case you screwed up there's some allowance okay okay so we have that and this is secure so what we need to do is just take our trusty pliers and 
and pull on this sucker so it's tight. Okay, that's tight. You cut the excess. Leave a little bit of a tag there so that we can burn and lock it. Okay, now again, I have to say I'm scared shitless. And that's a technical term. I'm scared shitless of this hook because I have been hooked so many times by this hook. And you don't even notice when it hits you. So kind of sketchy. Okay. Again, we wrap this as tight as we can. Okay. okay, wrap, okay, and then just lift it and align. So that's aligned right there. see this thing is hanging okay just hanging and when you are tying sometimes you actually kind of zone out and before you know it you've hung yourself okay that's it there we go Okay, so this bad boy is done, okay? Uh, you have to be very careful with this sucker, really. Okay, so we have the solid ring inserted, okay? We zoom out so you can, guys can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so we just put several turns first. I have to be very careful with this because we don't want to drop our bobbin. Okay. Just putting the final touches. There we go. And then it's kind of difficult because of the uh, it's kind of difficult because of the size that you're dealing with. It's, I mean, we could have taken the easier route and actually just do a single hook on this. But the point of this whole thing is not to make it things easy. It's so you guys can see that it is possible to do things like this. So if you can rig this with just one set, now you know that you can actually do two sets for this. So this is the back hook and I'm putting Okay, so this is the top, this is the bottom and you'll find that the bottom is a bit more protruded okay so it sits like that there we go you can see okay now all we have to do is just make another set for the top and we're golden so obviously the first step is to take some line We're going to get our hooks ready. Okay, now we do the, uh, the knots. If you don't do the knots, it's fine. It's just that 
I have found that the knots actually give you an extra layer of security and they don't slip. You could do knots as well. That's fine. The problem with knots is that it's hard to measure, especially for your final bit. It's very difficult. So for me, it's just better to do it this way. Now, cutting braid like this, it's better if you actually have wire cutters. Also, this is uh, specifically for cables. And you can see that the cuts are actually very consistent and clean. Doesn't have the jagged or uh, jaggedness that you get from dull scissors. And it doesn't dull up. So, you know, uh, or nearly as, as much as or as fast as uh, scissors. So even if the initial investment on one of those is actually a bit high, it's still better than scissors. Okay, so look at this. I am recording and I am not really watching the time because this is a camcorder and not an SLR. And if you're f filming with an SLR, there's a 30 minute limit. So you always have to watch with this, you know, I'll just shoot for however long and then I'll just cut the parts that uh, I keep, well, I'm not doing anything in, you know, just to make the video a bit more succinct. But I don't have to keep on like pressing record, play, record, and keep track of keep track of the footage. All right, so I'm gonna bring it in, as you can see here. Okay, now you see that that is not snug, right? But if you pull on this, you see that it doesn't even move. Okay, so it's going to hang like that and then there we go. Could have made it a bit longer but I am happy with this because if we made this any longer it's going to snag. So that's it. So yeah, that's it guys. All right. We have rigged the quick, the uh, awesome, deceptively looking micro jig from CB1. Okay, now if you have questions, write them in the comments below. If you think this is useful for your friends, please share it because uh, sharing is caring. All right, and if you haven't yet, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't yet. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next one, class dismissed.